trying to hold it down. So I was reading your uh, information. So um, tell me again from the top about the lady you have representing you, how you met with L.A. Reid, and how you think you got played. Yeah, I think I got played, you know what I'm saying, basically. And, uh, like the lady I had that was managing me, her name was Carolyn Nelson Henry. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I got hooked up through her through uh, a relative of mine, you know what I'm saying, I guess she was wanting them money or whatever or doing something, you know, and uh, he said, man, you know, she, 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 she'll she manage you. She got some artists and stuff. And I was like, really? And then what, what happened is when I when I got a chance to talk to her, she said, well, let's have a meeting over lunch, you know what I'm saying? Let me take you out to dinner. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay. I said, cool. I said, that'd be cool. And uh, she said, it was my cousin let her hear my old music, my, old, my music from back, you know, like years ago, like when I was right. like, yeah, and uh, she said, well, she, and she told me, she said, well, you know, you know, the music could be better, you know what I'm saying, but I think you, I think you, you, you got the, you got the talent to be like a, a, you know, to be a big star or something, and she was telling me, you know, so she was like, man, but, you know, you got that potential, I see it in you, mm-hmm. and I, I was like, uh, I said, okay, then, then we stayed with me at lunch, and that's when the, the situation occurred, when you know, you know. I don't know whether she took some uh, some in my drink or what, bro. Because I, I I left for a minute and went to the bathroom and came back. My drink was already there, and you know, you wouldn't think of nothing like that. You might try to do a business meeting with you and stuff. But I know when I was when I when I you know I know I, know I got you know kind of tips a little too fast and stuff off off the off the drinks and stuff I'm like right. And then that's when she hit me with the the, the, the contract, and I read a little bit of it. You know what I'm saying? I was like, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, but being out there, she had me, she, had, and she gave me the ink pen. And I was like, okay. And I signed it. Oh, I'm going to hit you in your motherfucking head, nigga. You tripping. <laughs> you tripping. Yeah, exactly. With exactly. no attorney? Exactly. You signed up with bro. no attorney? Exactly. You know, that's why I missed up here, bro. And I was like, hey. And then when I, then when I, I finally... You know, come to my center, I'm like, damn. I said, this chick right here got my ass, man. And, I was, and then when I got a chance to look at the paper, then then on top of that, she didn't even want to, she didn't even want to give me my paperwork. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, every time I asked for my paperwork, my copies and stuff, man, she's like, man, they offered my vault in the bank. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel like going to get it. I go and get it when I get a chance to. And she kept on saying that and stuff. And then and then I kept on her grabbing. I said, I said, I said, you know what? I said, you know, I'm gonna make my 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 cousin, which is a lawyer, take your ass to court. Mm-hmm. That's when she that's when she started, you know, showing me picking up, showing me stuff on my contract and stuff. And it, it was saying that basically I had signed a damn three sixty deal with a freaking manager. Wow. And and the thing about it though, and, and, and see, she paid, and you know, she was sending me to the studio and all this stuff, and saying she was putting the stuff in my name. You know, copywriting the song in my name and my own song and stuff, but you know, come to find out, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm thinking she, she was copywriting it in her name. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you know what I'm saying? Because and then then, cause, and then when I got you know then I got a chance to uh, then she put the stuff out on EP, you know, up on CD, baby. which don't cost nothing to put some stuff on digital, 
music and stuff. And right. She put it on. She put it on the little, little, little low budget internet station and stuff. Yeah. And and the thing about it, and, and how she did, and then no, then everything was going and going, and then she put my when she put my music out, you know, it was all over the place, iTunes, Spotify, and everything. The EP. Then that's when I started getting a lot, of, started noticing a lot of like labels and stuff started calling, you know, getting, getting in contact with me. But then they, all, all of a sudden I didn't hear nothing else. But that's because they were getting in contact with her. Mm-hmm. You know, they weren't getting now, in contact with me. Let me ask you a question. Me. Do you know, I'm sorry to interrupt, do you know how long your contract with her was? Oh, it, it was from, it, it was for like uh, two years, you know, uh, after that two years, it was about five her. Because the contract stated, after I got something, she had stated that, that she didn't do nothing for me, no more than, you know, didn't give me no soul or anything, that, you know, I could automatically terminate her. But right. those, those few songs that I did up on her that she covered, she can she, she can get like uh, 20% off of those songs, and I get 80%. Okay, well, that's just part of the game. You got fucked. And the thing about business is like most of you young guys and young women, you're so thirsty to call yourself being in the music industry mm-hmm. that you sign anything. And mm-hmm. like I said, I've seen this happen to some of the best people in the world, from the Cash Money Millionaires to Cardi B. Um, now, Cardi B making a lot of money, but she ain't getting the kind of money she's supposed to get. This I know for a fact. Right. Um, right. The thing about the hustle game, either you get played, either you got to be either the hustler or, uh, or, or you, you, how do I want to phrase this, make sure I get it right. You got to hustle or get hustled. Right. In fact, in this situation, the girl hustled you. Mm-hmm. In the music industry, unless you have a solid attorney, uh, unless you have common sense, which you didn't have at that moment. Right. That's how you. That's how you protect yourself. And to the audience listening, the people around the world, you never sign nothing unless you have an attorney. You can send it to an attorney, and when you're in the meeting and they talking all that sly shit, you know, the ambiance is nice, the lights, the candles. Because um, mm-hmm. some of you motherfuckers ain't never been to a, a nice restaurant, so you see a waiter right. and shit and nice lights. You go, ooh, this is. I made it. But a motherfucker's getting ready to play you. So you don't do nothing without the attorney. And make sure the attorney is somebody that you bring to the table, not them bringing or giving you an attorney. Because if they give you an attorney, the attorney and that person could be in cahoots with each other. One of the biggest um, robberies in the game, too, was TLC. Mm -hmm. And TLC got played bad back in the day. You know, so... Um, is these type of things that destroy a lot of artists. A lot of people don't get an opportunity to shine. The coldest person in the in the, to the history of the music business to this day, and nobody really gives this person his props, is Master P. Mm-hmm. Master P, brother, was the coldest in the music industry. Because he was getting stuff. He was getting paid at a time. He was making more than Michael Jackson. Wow. And he, I think, you know, I used to say this, and I think it's still hilarious to this day. I think mm-hmm. Master P dropped the album every three days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was dropping yeah. something every three days, yo, and made a killing. Now, I didn't like all the stuff that he did. You know, some of the stuff was good, some of the stuff was just okay. But for him to I can do it in put it out, like going that. through McDonald's, was insane. That means they they lived in the studio. They lived in the studio. Right. You know, so that's pretty much it. So I hear that you it sound like you're with your children. Right. You with your kids? Yeah, yeah, my daughter. Funny mm-hmm. thing about it, she said Master P wanted wanted her and her artists to come up there, but it's kind of funny when I when I when I when I decided not to go with her and, and not to deal with her no more, the whole thing got shut down. 
Yeah, because she could, well, two things happened. She could have been lying. You never mm-hmm. know. You know, exactly. somebody's going to do you like that with the contract. You can't take nothing that they say as their words. Everything you from, from that moment on has to be speculation. Because once you lie in this business, you're a liar. Right, exactly. You know, a person really has to go the extra yard to really prove themselves. But once you get caught in a lie, it's, 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 it's totally a different ball game. So here's the thing. So what is it you're trying to do now? Uh, I'm basically trying to get back my get myself back to get uh get my new you know, I I'm I'm rem- I just recorded two new songs and I just um songs I wrote both of songs I copy written I'm, they copy written both of them, all the new songs I got a copy written. Okay, cool. And, right. right, and I did that on my own, so you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So um and, and now uh pretty soon I'm, I'm gonna have to get get them all ready on the BMI and I wanna be able to get get Back in front of the record, in front of the record label, because I got screwed on them deals and stuff. Right, uh, right. So you know, what I'm saying I want to, you know, but, but this time I want to be able to come correct. You know, like you know, be able to handle my business. You know, what I'm saying and actually get the deal done instead of you know. All right, so let me ask you a question. There. Now I'm sorry to interrupt. What type of music do you do? You're a rapper, R&B, um, I got a hip hop artist, hip hop artist. All right, and how old are you? I'm 37. Okay, so he might be a little too old, but in this mm-hmm. world, nothing is never impossible. Right, right. You know, because the rap game is a young man's game. But if your shit's fire, I don't think, I don't care how old you are, you have an opportunity to make it. Because I'm the kind of man that if a person has a dream and you can get me on the phone, I'm not the guy who will destroy you dream. I'm not the guy to say, oh, that's not going to happen. I, I've right. been around long enough to see the impossible happen. Right. So you definitely have you definitely have a chance. Now, have you right. ever thought about yeah. representing yourself? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was thinking about that too. And the thing about it also, while well, I was also, I don't even have to have a record. You don't even have to really have a record deal now. You can just do your independent thing now. Right, and that's oh. what I was going to suggest. Because, 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 like you said, record labels are not really going to sign guys in their late thirties and their forties and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, like you said, it's a young man's game. So, you know, I'd rather do the independent thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I want to also, I, but I also try, I'm also trying to figure out this promotion stuff because you've got a lot of uh, crooked promotions and stuff out here too, where different people are saying they want this. Thousand dollars for this package, twenty five hundred for this package, and you know, and then even the DJs, the DJs tell me you have to have a campaign going on. And I'm saying to myself, how big of a campaign can it be? You know, what I'm saying I was already in front of the biggest record level in a lot. You know, it was, and I, I got the proof on all on my Instagram and social media page. Here's the thing, so, man. Do you have a job already? Um. No, I'm not currently working right now, but I'm, I'm drawing off of a uh, off, off, uh, working company. You know what I'm saying? I got hurt a while back here on the job. Okay. So you can take care of your family with that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. So here's the thing. I don't know if you could become a superstar, but I can mm-hmm. show you how to make money. If you okay. get a pen and piece of paper, I'll, and, and we'll break this down to you. Get a pen and piece of paper. And I'll show you how you can at least make two, three thousand dollars a month, if okay. not more. All right. Okay. This is how you have to do that. Now, you have Instagram, correct? Mm-hmm. All right. How many followers do you have on Instagram? Uh oh, forty some thousand. Okay. You rich, my nigga. You rich. Huh? You are rich already. Let me explain to you. Ready? Here we go. You got forty thousand people. The, the mm-hmm. average people who will buy something or 40000 is maybe 1%, 2%. Mm-hmm. All right? So what you do is you um, go in the studio, you create your music. You do a video. You can get a female. You can get some, a handsome guy, whatever, depending on who's your followers. And you say, hey, everybody, such and such is dropping his uh, uh, rap album on this particular day, ba 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 ba. Um, make sure you go to iTunes, SoundCloud. You set it up, 
and you charge maybe five, ten dollars an album, and you mm-hmm. hope that you sell anywhere between one to three thousand copies over the time you get ready to drop your next right. Album. And that's all you got to do, family. Mm. That's it. You don't need a record label. You don't need distribution. You are distribution. Right. You set it up that people can either spend the money on iTunes, you get it direct to you. You find out a way how the money circles back to you. You have people hit you on your PayPal. You set up a PayPal account. You say, everybody, or oh, you send the, send the stuff out, or you do your research mm-hmm. and you find out how you get your stuff on iTunes, which I, you know how to do that already. Right, you right. set yourself up. You do your research. And the reason why I say I'm taking to the ground um, depths of research is because mm-hmm. we have other people listening. Yeah, I can easily make it easy for you and put you in touch with certain people, but that's not what I want to do. What I want right, to do is right. teach you how to feed yourself. Okay. And the way you feed yourself is you do your homework on how you get your songs on iTunes, how you get your songs on Spotify, et cetera, et cetera. Then you find out, okay, how do I get people to buy it and the money comes to me? Right. You ain't got to do no, you ain't got to go on no radio. You ain't got to do no video. Mm-hmm. All you got to do is in your neighborhood, people give out your song for free. You get like about mm-hmm. 10 of them, you give them for free. And you tell people, hey, can you, I'm going to give this to you for free, but can you tell people to go to my Instagram and check out my other, and on the uh, and on the stuff that you give away for free, you don't give them the whole album. Right. One song. And right. tell them they can get the other, the rest of it on iTunes. It's a, it's a groundwork, it's a hustle, but yo, you're not working. You got, you're getting work as right. work comp. So you got a lot of time. If your shit is good, people going to buy it. Right, right. People going to buy it, brother. You know, and I use this concept of online. I was talking to my not too long ago mm-hmm. about how to do the music business and to, you know, you go online on Instagram, you see these girls selling their clothes, pants, tops. Mm-hmm. They go down to the garment district. They get their clothes. And um, they come back, they they model, and the, and the fatter the ass, the smaller the waist, the same as light, the more sales. But then you got full-size, beautiful women and real, real skinny women, and they all making a killing. These girls are making forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a month selling clothes. Yeah. Tell yeah. So they don't even have to open a boutique no more. You know, girls like, oh, I, I need a person to loan me some money to, uh, um, so I can open up me a shop. You ain't got to open up shop in your, your apartment. Your house is your shop. So what I'm saying to you is your record label, you in it right now. You in your record right. label. Right. You know, your meeting room is your, your meeting room is your living room. Right. Your lunch okay. room is your kitchen. And then, look, I got a the two singles I just redid. I mean, I just I just did, man. Those things like hot and fist reap. And one of them is like some new females, like the one uh called a blessing. Mm-hmm. And it got and it got like that new flavor, like you know what I'm saying, like the youngsters, you know, like like how the youngers, you know what I'm saying, doing it right. with the all, all the tunes and stuff. You know, I just yeah, had it like my, that. Did I give you an email to send to my Instagram? I mean, uh, to my email. Send me a song nah, to my nah, Instagram. Nah, nah. I mean, yeah, I don't get the email. my email. Okay, what, what's that email? Um, it's gonna be. Yeah, yeah, just send me one song. I just want to hear what you got, and I'll get around to. It. I'm a busy dude, so I ain't gonna say I'm gonna listen to it today. I'm not gonna say I'm gonna listen to it next week, but I'm gonna listen to it. Right. But the goal, the goal is not me listening to it. The goal is giving me, giving you the knowledge to how mm-hmm. to pursue and get money. And it's good to know that you know, you know, you fire that old manager who played you. It's, it's, right. it's that fans and people who listen to this around the world and anything you do, I don't care if it's music industry, I don't give a fuck. If it's signed a contract to LA Fitness, read the mm-hmm. shit first so you know. And LA Fitness, I mean, a little exaggerate, but 
you could sign that right then. But anything that got to do with paper and you get the check and it's your, about your product. Right. Like right. even when I got my label, my comedy label, the the mm-hmm. deal was so horrible. I hung the phone up on the people every time they called me. <laughs> Because I was like, y'all out your motherfucking mind. You think I'm going to sign a deal like that? So long story short, I got a crazy deal. So this is why every year now I'm dropping an album. Like right now I'm dropping. I'm the, the, My attorney, I'm not doing it. My attorney um, um, got a bidding war going between Netflix and Amazon just off my name. We haven't even so, sent so you, them. You got your own, you got your own label? I got my own label. So I got my own label, I got my own production company, like for the next. Hey, but what about what about them working doing something again? No, nah, like it, it ain't gonna happen. I'm too busy, and I don't have the patience. Mm. So it's not anything like that. I'm trying to teach you how to do your own shit. Y'all trying? I want you to keep right, your own right, money. Right. Like, come on, yo, you right. fucking out. Right, right, right. Time right. to be a man, yo. Get your own. You gonna be? I'm making you your own boss. Okay, okay. That's what I'm doing. I make bosses over here. Like, you know, everybody I touch from D.L. Hughley, Mike Epps, Godfrey, mm-hmm. my whole crew from the 90s, I, I made all them niggas bosses. They right. all thinking. So I'm, I'm taking the time to teach you how to be a boss. And here you want to do business with me. I ain't got time, yo. You'll be <laughs> mad at me. You'll be mad at me because I, I I'm trying to raise a family. You know, I got business right, right. to do. And I'm on a plan. Like, I have... My shit is playing up for the next 20, 25 years. Right, right. Okay. You know, that's what I'm doing. I got I got shit planned already. So, like, I'm vacationing mm-hmm. with my daughter, and I took the time while I watched the basketball game. I said, let me call this brother real quick and see what's going mm-hmm. on. I wanted to hear your conversation and see what you, see what you uh, intellect. I see that you're kind of stupid, though, because you signed that damn contract. But that's right, the right. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I have to be honest with you. You stupid and motherfucker signed that shit. But... Um, you learn by mistakes. Right, right, right. And now you ain't got to sign with nobody no more. You can do right, something. Exactly. Now, here's the thing. If you don't do it, all you can do is blame yourself. Right, right. Exactly. You look in the mirror. If it's 10 years from now, 20 years from now, you didn't do what you're supposed to do. I uh, want you to look in the mirror and say, I didn't want it bad enough. Right. Yeah. yeah that's the truth, family. Mm-hmm. That's the truth. You ain't want it bad enough. And I hear that you got a, you said you got a five year old kid in there. Right. You still fucking. <laughs> <laughs> you still yeah. nothing in your girl. You still nothing in there. <laughs> like you're rich and shit, you 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 fucking her legs all pat back, like you really successful, nigga. You know, so the same energy you doing while you fucking your girl, take that same energy and go get you and make you some money. Right, right. Okay. And make you some money. Stay focused and try not to have no more children, so that you don't get off your square. Exactly, because they they cost me. <laughs> yeah, it costs, man. You know, I know you're hanging up there. You got your feet up. Your girl got to walk around the panties and shit. You're thinking, oh, baby, come here. <laughs> oh, my God, you look so beautiful. And then, bam, you got three, four motherfucking kids. Yeah. And it's a wrap. Hold on a second, yo. Before I call him out. Uh, yeah, so that's what you got to do, family. Keep your dick in your pants. Save your money. Take care of your five-year-old. And put work in because it ain't gonna come. You know, most people sit back, singers, rappers, or whatever, and think the shit's just gonna fall in their lap. Mm -hmm. You gotta go motherfucking get it and go get more than they say you could have. That's how you do it. I've been doing this shit since you was two years old in this business, and I and I get up every morning like it's my first day on the job. That's how they I got go it. Yeah, they go get yep. This is my DNA. You know, my parents is fly, so you know, right. my DNA. So and and, and, it's, and it's in my children, and they go get it. Mm. So and, and, uh, some people just don't have that in them, but I think that you can motivate people to get that in them. And first, you got to right. find out who is for you. You got to cut out all the negativity. Even in the, mm-hmm. even the way that you talk, like 
you know, people talk negative and confusion all the time. Right, um, right. That's that's a distraction. If you're caught up in family issues and ex girlfriend issues and being a player and got baby mama drama and ex girlfriend and all, all that takes away from your success. Right. You know, that's how come when guys get caught cheating, it really messes up their career for a while. And one of my examples is Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods yeah. top of the world until his bitch caught him, his wife rather, and hit, hit that car with the damn golf club, and it took him years to get back on his square, years to get back. So stay focused. Handle your motherfucking business. You got the talent. You don't need a manager. All right. You don't need a manager. The way the business is set up now, you could do everything yourself. Why give someone 20%? I had priority about to sign me for 20%. And I turned them down. Mm. Yeah, because I could do the same thing they're doing and keep all my money. Right, right. Fuck that. Yeah, because they said, they said uh, in the next couple of years, record labels are going to be extinct anyway. I don't, I'm not even thinking about them. So whatever happens to them, mm-hmm. we wish them the best. I'm thinking about me. So right. I know I know I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm dropping an album every year, and my shit's going to be blazing every year. So um, my, new, my last album, um, Who Raised You, went number 10 on Billboard. Mm-hmm. Made a lot of paper. I didn't get the Grammy, but, you know, I came up with these fly-ass niggas out of Compton, California, and their whole attitude, they didn't care about Grammys and awards. They just cared about the paper. And that's Ice Cube, right. Dr. Dre, and those guys in WA. And mm-hmm. you don't never see them trying to win an Oscar or win a Grammy. You don't even see them motherfuckers at the war show. No, they don't even be at the war show. I'll be checking it out, too. But even when back in the day, them niggas didn't really go to award shows. No, nah. and Master P said, "Man, uh, he, he, he got award shows, man, rip off in a, in a travesty." Yeah, they don't <laughs> do that shit. So I'm the same way. And what I was being by that, because Dave Chappelle won the Grammy, but my who mm-hmm. raised you? And you can look it up. Also, Kevin Hart's last album and Dave Chappelle. Who raised you? Is that, is that fly? Now, a lot of people don't know me as a stand-up comedian, but once they figure it out, and this is like an underground podcast right now. It's for it's for the motherfuckers who get in it, who grind in, who just want to win. And we all, when I blow, everybody who listens to this show, we all blow because the more success I get, the more I turn on other people right. in any way I can, you know? So that's my... That's one of my dreams. This is the reason why I started this podcast was to help people like yourself give you the knowledge and give you the information and it's up to you how you process it. So if you don't process it, ain't nothing I could do. All I know is that yeah. I laid it on your ears. And that's that's my job. That's all I can do. Man, I so appreciate that information, man. And- and the knowledge, man, for myself and the taking man and, and go upwards with it. Yeah, you can do it, family. And don't and don't think about trying to hit it hit a home run next month or next year. The goal right. is stay consistent. Right. As long as you're doing this every year. Or well, every six well, months. Shit. You wanna drop out well, every six months, you can do it. Mm-hmm. Well, let me ask you something. How did I find out uh what that EP doing and stuff? Cause I know a couple of times that the, the EP I got out there, it's been out there for like two years. But that one that they put out there, and it popped up. Uh, bought my phone balling was here's the was here's like, the thing. Focus on the new stuff right now, and as okay. you learn the game, as you learn mistakes and learn from there, you can double back and learn about that. Right. Okay. You know, because what, if I tell you about that now, guess what? It's a distraction. Right, right, okay. Focus on the new stuff now, and then as you get that popping, then one day next year or later, then you know what? Let me check on this because now I know what to do. Mm-hmm. Now I know what to do. 
And it's like a person stealing jokes, right? I always say back in the day, a person steals jokes, fuck it. I'm just going to come up with more shit because I'm that good. And what it sounds like is that you're that good. Mm -hmm. Fuck it. Bitch, keep that shit. Look at, I mean, give me an example. Look at Dr. Dre and Death Row, right? Right. When Dr. Dre left Death Row, he told them motherfuckers keep it all. He ain't want nothing. Right. And that motherfucker worth 700 something billion now. Billion, rather. Oh, yeah. So yeah, when you're good it. like you are, and I don't know if you are yet, I'm just going off the string. You could be fucking hard, well, I don't know. But that's not me to judge. If you know that you're good. I'm good. I'm on the phone. And if you know that you're good, don't worry about that. Just keep moving. Right, right. All right, yeah. family, you got my, this is my direct number. You okay. can reach me uh, anytime that you want, but always have something to say when you call me because I'll hang up on your ass if you just call just to be gone. <laughs> right, right, All right. right. I'm going to be serious. I'm like, nigga, I ain't got time. I swear to God, I'll tell you that. All right? Whoa, to, right. to the fans from Germany to Japan. To motherfucking Long Beach, come to California, to Inglewood, to the originator, Jersey City, New Jersey, to Philadelphia, to Houston, Texas, to Atlanta. Yo, you listen to the TK Kirkland podcast. May your pain be champagne on April 26th. Catch me at the jukebox in Kansas City, Missouri. And then uh, April 27th, 28th, 29th. Catch me up in Sacramento at Rancho Cordova, Tommy T's. Get your tickets and may your pain be champagne again. To my man, I wish you the best. Remember, if you don't do it, look yourself in the mirror and say, I didn't want it bad enough. But I, I think that you're going to take this advice and, and put one foot in front of the other and get on your motherfucking grind. That's cool? Yes, yes, All right, family. So play the player. Pimp the pimp. May God bless you. All right? All right. Sorry, yes, sir. All Take right. care. This episode of the TK Kirkland Show was produced by Chris Thomas, executively produced by Charlemagne the God. This is an official Loudspeakers Network production.